As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I've kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said. Go, sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 to 22. I'm a long way from our parish of St Mary Magdalene, South Burstead, because I'm standing in the wealthiest street in our neighbourhood. Apparently it's the Aran Way in Aldwick on the Craigwell Estate. Apparently, if you took the average price of the properties on this one street, it is the wealthiest one around, although there are lots like it very close to here. Each property that on average is, well, is, is valued at well over three quarters of a million. Our passage today has a rich young man in it and he approaches Jesus and he asks him what must I do to be saved? It's a great question. Although it does have a big problem, it's suggesting that entering into the kingdom is about something that we do. So Jesus joshes with him. He says, well, what about the commandments? And he's saying, yeah, no, I'm really good on those. And Jesus talks about the back half intentionally, the ones that relate to other people and things. He doesn't mention initially the first ones, which are about our relationship with God. And again, the man is saying, yeah, no, great. I've done all this since primary school. I'm good on all those. And Jesus loves the man and says, do you know what? There's something that you need to do. Effectively, if this man likes doing stuff, he needs to put some, he needs to put Jesus before anything else. He needs to be able to let go of his stuff, anything that he's going to put in front of and before God. What I have here, a monkey trap. <laughs> Apparently, this is one way you can catch a monkey. It's a coconut with a hole in it and some rope. You, what you would do is you would tie the rope onto a tree and you would put in here maybe a peanut, maybe some fruit. The monkey would come along, place his hand into the monkey, uh, into the trap, into the coconut, and then would not let go. And by forming a fist, it wouldn't then come out through the hole. So the monkey would be trapped onto the coconut tied to the tree. All the monkey would need to do is to let go and he would be free. And yet, apparently, that's not what they do. All we need to do is to let go of the things that would actually we put before God, before the place that Jesus ought to have in our lives. You know, there's a great hymn, nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. 
What for you is your coconut? What are you putting in the place of where God ought to be? What are you not prepared to let go of? Father, thank you so much indeed that Jesus loved this man and yet he was prepared to let him go until he realised that he needed to put Jesus first in his life. May I let go of anything that is getting in the way of my relationship with you and that I would put before the rightful place that you ought to have in my life. Amen.